has been handed to me. Uh, this is a recording of a recording of, I guess this piece aired on Anderson Pooper Scooper. Someone recorded it off a of TV, and this is the only way we're going to get to watch it. So let me just... Uh, there it is. It's a black just wearing a mask, but refusing to. It's become a political act. See, that's L.A. Reid now with some examples from a small town in Missouri. Here's the jolly cone again. I think there is a stigma to wearing a mask. I know I've talked to people and I've heard them say, well, I want to wear a mask, but I'm afraid people will judge me and think I'm a period or a sheep. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. It's really cold. I feel like I'm pretty hated right now. Michelle Walker has become an unlikely villain in this remote part of Missouri. She this remote part of Missouri city, where people are inbred and, and don't know anything. She says many residents resent her team's efforts to control a virus they don't believe can be controlled. At first, they were very No, I don't scared, believe the numbers. Very aware, but recently... They're bored with it. Everybody's tired of it. Exactly. That's because it's been used and beaten over our heads with for months. They think just it's affecting their everyday life. COVID kind of took normal, everyday country living. COVID is spiking in rural America, including here in the Ozarks. Where my family are, and they're racist. 30% in the last week. And their cases went from 40 in August These are people who have the common That's a cold. Lot in a county with just 6,000 people, no hospital, and two ambulances. This is currently where we're housing all of the county's PPE. Everyone knows everyone here. They know who's in quarantine and who wears masks. There's a lot of shame. I mean, <laughs> a lot of the reason why we're seeing cases rise now. This is just because people don't want to get tested because they don't want to affect people's lives. Their it's because anyone who has cold symptoms is going to test positive, dummy. I don't care if you're a local or not. Uh huh. When COVID first hit, Brian Keithley and his family stockpiled goods. Subscriber to the show. Now he says he's over it, and that it's gotten too political. We sit in a coffee shop and watch people walk in the door. We look at a mask, and we all look at each other, and we go, Democrat. Uh -huh. It's a political virus for the most part. Who made it political? The government. Who's in charge of the oh, government? Would you, like to say, would you like to put all this off on Trump? No. And he should have been a leader, and he should have, he should have gotten in front of the podium and said, Yeah, get him. It's a really good mask. It's a really, really good mask. We have the greatest mask ever. Nobody cares what Trump has to say. There's no politician, there's no person of authority of any kind that can issue any kind of order that's going to make people abide by this. Precisely. I told you it was a political situation. I don't know um, what it would take for people to take it more seriously. I'm just really tired. They already screwed up by crying wolf about it too many times. For the most part, uh, people are revolting against it and revolting to the point that they're causing, maybe causing a little damage. But does that make you a bad human when you finally just give in and realize it's here to say, I can't help everybody and I can't keep everyone safe. And I know that there's a chance that I may get it. And it's a calculated risk. I guess if I get it and it kills me, then it's slow walking and sad singing for the family. What would you put on your tombstone? Didn't wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't wear a mask. I couldn't have said it better myself, obviously, because I'm about to cough. We'll be right back. <laughs>